So, no, I, I wouldn't say I have a passion for HR. Welcome back to Human Resources for the People. It's a human capital revolution. Today I want to talk about an interesting arena of comparative human resources, which is the right to work check or, or the I-9 in the United States. It's the idea of verifying whether or not someone can work in their country or not and how we do it. So to preface this discussion first, in the United States, we use the I-9. It's a series of questions that have been lined out by the federal government, uh, generally on paper, but also electronically. It asks, you know, a myriad of your personal questions, specifically where you live, what your social security number, and what your status in the country is. Then uh, you have to uh, provide documents. In the United States, it's kind of complex. There's a lot of different documents, which, in, you know, often include a driver's license and social security card, can include birth certificates, passports, uh, tribal documents, school cards, voters registration and any number of other verif verifiable documents to work in the United States. And so that is uh, sort of the background of the United States. And I want to talk about what that looks like in uh, England or in the UK specifically. And instead of the I-9, they have what's called a right to work check. And it has to be carried out whenever an employee starts work, which is just the same as the United States. And when an employee has a temporary visa follow-up, a follow-up checkup should be performed near the visa expiry. Ours uh, in the United States, it's a little bit different. So you you don't have to do anything until the visa is expired uh, if there's a temporary. And really, a temporary here is an employee uh, employment authorization document. Uh, for example, a permanent resident card, which is not, the people are not citizens. They are eligible uh, they are not eligible to be checked up on, uh, even if it's expired, for example. So, uh, you know, in the, United, or in the United Kingdom, they have effectively the same process as the United States with respect to right-to-work checks. Um, what I, what I kind of want to highlight is what documents are needed. Uh, usually, they for a long time, the United Kingdom was providing a passport or visa, but in 2019, you could do it online. Uh, and it now is compulsory to use the system to check to see whether or not uh, anyone who has a biometric card. That's kind of interesting. We don't have that opportunity in the United States. Um, and I don't understand fully exactly how you would confirm that the person that you're checking for is even is even the person that is on the uh, is on the online system, right? Um, we don't generally check foreign passports, which is what this is referring to. Uh, but they can't always do online, and there's a whole bunch of acceptable documents for establishing the right to work, and you have to follow that. Uh, what's interesting is it's a little bit different in the United States, although quite a bit, they're kind of the same too. Uh, the national insurance number in the United Kingdom, which I believe is similar to our social security number, does not confirm the right someone has the right to work. That's actually the same in the United States because there are many visas who, uh, you know, where those people have social security cards, but they're actually not eligible to work without the employment authorization document or EAD. So that's kind of interesting that they also treat the national insurance document as not quite a confirming document in, in this world, a right to check, right to work check. So um, they have to go through an online check. Uh, if they have a biometric residence per, uh, permit, they go online and they don't need to do a manual check, but they do have to make sure that the photo is the same, which is good. Uh, although I've had problems with photos before with respect to this. And uh, whether or not they have uh, a copy or uh, r retain the copy of the online check. In addition, they need to uh, review if the student needs, or if it's a student and needs extra documents for the term date. And I, I most wanted to highlight here what the penalties were for illegally working. If an employee does not have the right to work and the employer has not followed the proper procedure, they can actually get up to 15000 for the first offense and 20000 for any subsequent offense. But those are about to go up. It's actually fairly similar to the United States. Uh, for one, the, the, the right to work check, or the, the similar situation in the United States, which is the I-9, uh, actually puts uh, six months of imprisonment and a fine of $3,000 per worker uh, in addition for the unlawful hiring of uh, illegal aliens. 
in addition, uh, if you have an I-9 paperwork violation, it's $100 to $1,000 per employee involved. And that sounds small, but really that actually can be quite significant because there are a lot of violations that can be made on the I-9 document. It is It can be very difficult. In addition, um, what, what I wanted to highlight here is that knowingly having undocumented workers can be up to $11,000 for each worker. And uh, in, if they happened after 2008, it goes up to $16,000. And frankly, that number needs to go up quite a bit. In, the, in, the, uh, in Britain, it's 15,000 for the 15,000 pounds for the first uh, offense. So I think that's, I don't know, roughly $17,000. Um, and 20,000 for any, uh, subsequent offense. So that's significantly more. So they are uh, punishing employers harder for, uh, hiring, uh, undocumented workers. And I really think that that's where the United States needs to go. Uh, these employers really need to, um, have uh, more skin in the game and care a little bit more. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye guys.